Here in Springfield, Illinois for Illinois Gun Owners Lobby Day 2012 and uh, here at NRA News and uh, the NRA publications, we, uh, we talk about armed citizens a lot. Um, we read about them, we write about them, we report on them, but it's not often you actually get to actually see one and hear from one um, personally. This is Rady who lives uh, in Chicago here in Illinois. Uh, Rady, would you share your story with us? Uh, last year on February 21st, two burglars broke into my home. I heard glass breaking in my basement. Actually, I didn't know it was two burglars at the time. I just heard glass breaking. I grabbed my gun to go see what was going on. Uh, when I got in my basement, there was a guy standing there and I asked him what was he doing in my basement. And he raised up a tire iron. And I asked him not to move. I pulled my gun out at that time. And I said, don't move, because I didn't know if he was gonna come towards me or what. Um, he did make a move. Um, I felt my life was threatened and I did shoot. Um, he turned and ran. I didn't know there was someone else in the basement and they were in another room and when they heard the gunshot they came out and they had to run at me in order to get out the basement. I tried to get the guy to stop. Um, I didn't know if he was running at me but he had the tire iron raised in his hand and I, in order to defend myself I did shoot him and um, actually he was still holding the tire iron when the police got there. For someone who can't imagine going through that situation what was it like at the time and what was it like in the aftermath? At the time, you're so frightened that you, I've never wanted to become a victim, first of all. And that's mainly what I was thinking about is the fact that I could not defend myself against this man with my bare hands. And I did not want to become a victim. And I didn't know what his intentions were with a tire iron raised coming at me charging in a fast manner. So it's a split second decision that you have to make. And when it comes to your safety and your well-being, I would hope that a person would make the right decision as I did and defend themselves. Now you live in Chicago, you had a gun, but uh, and you also spoke here to this group at, uh, at iGold. Before this happened, were you a Second Amendment supporter? Were you like an NRA person? Were you a big gun person? Or did you just have the, did you just have the gun for self-protection and you kind of like got into this whole world now? No, actually, um, I was a victim of a violent crime at a very young age. And I decided when I got grown that I would be able to defend myself and so that I wouldn't become a victim again. So I've had a gun since I was 21. I've never had to use my gun before. And I have been in several situations where someone would thought that I would have pulled it out and I didn't. But when you have, in that situation, when you have someone running at you and they see that you have a gun and they don't stop, there is no other choice to make it, when it comes down to your safety. Here in Illinois, it's the final state of the, in the union that doesn't allow concealed carry. Let's say that this happened to you outside of your home. Would you have preferred, would you like to have the opportunity to carry on you? Do you think concealed carry should come to Illinois? Um, what are your f feelings on use of guns outside of the home? Well, of course, I think that we should be able to carry outside of our homes because one of the burglars got away. And I don't know, I have to get from my car into my home every day and I have to get from my home to my car. And there's nothing to say that there's not someone out there waiting for me. So I would love to be able to carry my weapon outside of my home. I think I've made rash decisions before and I've made good judgment. And I think there are other people out there that can make these type of rash decisions and judgments. No law-abiding citizen wants to go to jail for doing something incorrectly. And we have to have training and once you go through training, people will understand that. And there are a lot of people out there that have had guns and still have guns. And none of these people have done anything foolish to shoot someone that wasn't justified. And in a case that that may have happened, those guns basically are illegal guns anyhow most of the times. And that's what the politicians need to look at. And they don't look at that. You live in a city with a mayor who is one of the most anti-gun voices in the country. Do you, why, do, why don't stories like yours sway him more, do you think? I don't necessarily know that he's heard my story. Um, I would love to sit down and talk to him, and I can tell him my story, and maybe that would help him to make a decision on, let him know that there really are women out there that do not want to become a victim, but want to be able to defend themselves. So if anyone is willing to listen, uh, politicians, I'd be more than happy to sit down and speak with them. And maybe there's some insight or something that I can put into the bill that would make them feel more comfortable with passing it. But for whatever reason, we as women, 
And just we as citizens have the right to protect ourselves, and it is in the Constitution. I'm not here to quote law because I'm not an attorney, but I am a citizen that pays property taxes, and I pay these people's salaries. And all I'm asking is to be able to defend myself so I can keep contributing to society as a positive person. You got in, you said you bought your gun because you were yourself a victim of violent crime. Talk to women who aren't victims of violent crimes but need to, to protect and defend themselves. Talk to women who can't imagine ever even picking up a gun. Um, how, how would you recommend they get over that, uh, that hump? And how would you recommend that they become responsible gun owners themselves? To women that um, don't believe that this could happen to them, they're actually living in a fantasy. And they do have to understand that these criminals are coming up with new ideas every day so that they can make us become victims. And the thing that you have to understand is they may just come to snatch your purse, but it's always the potential that they may want to rape you too. And if that's what, if you don't want to live with that, then you want to be able to carry a gun because there is basically nothing most of us can do against the man to defend ourselves unless we do have a gun. And that's what I would say to them. Brady, thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing your story. It's an honor to speak to you and, uh, and really appreciate your time here on NRA News. Okay, thank you too.